United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Wayne Dupree Show. I'm Hutch Bailey Jr. here on Red Voice Media. And over in Minnesota, we have... Hey, I'm Jason Robertson from Minnesota. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Before we get into it today, do us a favor. Give us a like, comment, share. Uh, we can always have some visibility to, to the viewership logged in, and you can tell when they don't send notifications out. And like... We stream on Wayne's Facebook page, and it clearly didn't get pushed. So like, comment, share helps us break the algorithm. Yeah, there you go. And we're waiting on Wayne patiently. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully he'll be in here in a short. I'm not sure of the of the schedule of different things, but we'll get through it. Uh, how about yesterday? Uh, my goodness, man. Mitch McConnell. This, this, oh, uh, my God. God, this is becoming a national problem, man. And it's not just Mitch. It's obviously right in front of us uh, with Joe Biden and John Fetterman and Dianne Feinstein. I mean, it's uh, it's reaching a dangerous level. I mean, these are the people at the at the core of our leadership. Well, of our Washington, D.C. leadership. Well, you know, it's interesting because if you think what we fought against, we fought against like feudal systems where people ran you forever and and they were in charge and now we've got these people that entered congress 40 years ago 50 60 years ago and and now they're the ones leading the party so mitch mcconnell's supposed to be our voice in the senate that's defending against all the craziness and the guy i mean we'll have to grab the video quick and play it but uh the guy can't it, like he just freezes I mean, I had my father-in-law in memory care, and he's as bad as as Mitch McConnell is, and he he's just got to go. Yeah, it it is bad, and, and you know the thing that that's scary if you uh, pay attention to the Senate is the vultures that are that are circling uh, around him are every bit as bad as Mitch, man. I mean, you've got John Thune, John Cornyn, you've got Barrasso from Wyoming, which I wish they would primary. Um, right. Th these people are a detriment to the MAGA movement. They're they're there uh, to protect against us, I, I believe. Well, yeah, I mean, you figure and we talk about it all the time where the Uniparty, you're established. It's not right versus left, folks. It is the establishment versus the regular citizens. They are not representing we the people. And these folks, you were never supposed to make being in, in Congress your life's work. You were supposed to go in as a citizen, serve, go back out and be a real person. And these folks have never 
done anything in the real world. They haven't, you know, participated in school boards or run a business or had a job or things like that. They just get into politics and then they just ride it out. And then remarkably at the end of their career, they're multimillionaires and everybody's like, Whoa, how did that happen? It's, it's ridiculous. Invariably too. And and they like, they like the, the shallow empty vessels the most because they're only getting sent up there to do what somebody else wants them to do. I mean, I, I always use the analogy, you know, especially since the nineties when Congress stopped writing legislation, you know, I mean, they literally stopped writing legislation and sent it over to K street. Uh, yep. So the lobbyists could do it. And so they get uh, these, for instance, Obamacare is a good example. Those of us old enough to remember Obamacare know, or old enough to remember, no, that Obamacare was 2.0. Right. It was it was Hillary clear first. Yep. And they put it in the desk. And when they got in power, they brought it out. They dusted it off, added a few billion more items on there. And the people that sold it, Congress is like, they're like used car salesmen. Yep. That's what it boils down to. I mean, and the very best used car salesmen are running these committees, running these investigations. They're, well, they're the best actors, the most photogenic most of the time, and the ones that uh, can articulate the smoke the best and the mirrors. Well, and that's what's crazy, too, is that if you look at who who we have running, and we love to blame the left. It's all the left, the left, the left. But the fact of the matter is, why is Obamacare still here? It's still here because of the Republicans. Remember, Senator McCain, thumbs down, we're not... Why do we have socialized medicine? It is not because the Democrats, sure, they passed it, but the way it's supposed to work is that all of a sudden it should get undone when the, when Republicans take control. But we have spineless, do nothing Republicans who don't want to uh, don't want to survive. Hey, hey, Hutch, should I drop this video? I, I grabbed the McConnell, the Mitch Ladies one. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to see this. It, it's something it's something to behold. Go ahead. For re-election. Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Thank you. Somebody else have a question? Please speak up. You, you know, what I don't understand is I don't understand. Oh, wow. Sorry. Okay. We'll, we'll get it right. <laughs> I don't understand all these people's wives. Right. You know, I, I really don't, man. I, I mean, Diane Feinstein gets a buy because hers is dead. But like Joe Biden, John Fetterman, Mitch McConnell, what's up with these people, man? Don't they have any anybody that loves them in their life? Well, yeah. And. And here's what's ridiculous. Folks, think of this. That confused, sad old man, whatever you think he used to be or how good a job he used to think he did, he can't complete a sentence. He completely freezes up. And and like I said, we used to visit my father-in-law, God rest his soul, before he passed away in memory care two, three times a week. Mitch McConnell would have fit right in with those guys. They they don't know what day it is. They don't know what they don't know anything. And you wonder why a Republican Senate gets run over and just lets the left run roughshod over things. It's uh, it's beyond ridiculous. So uh, until we get rid of people, um, it's just it's just not in, until we change our leadership in the Republican Party and even on the Democrat side, like Democrats can't be OK with Diane Feinstein being wheeled out like a corpse. Like, come on. Although they're OK because she just votes D no matter what. So. There has to be an under under underpinning rising up of Democrat people against this madness because it's really flipping the Constitution right on its head. Ladies and gentlemen, we're lucky to have with us uh, today, and I, uh, I'm i not sure what the timing is supposed to be. I was fully expecting Wayne to be here, uh, but something must have happened uh, with that. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, lucky to have 
uh, Colonel retired Robert Maness uh, come to the show. Rob, uh, thank you for uh, coming by and uh, glad to have you, sir. Hey, thanks, guys. Good to see y'all. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. I'm sitting here uh, looking at some of the things on your on your Twitter feed, and, and I wanted to ask you, <laughs> what do you think about uh, about the indictments that are going on right now with uh, President Trump? It's a little bizarre. Oh, it's more than just a little bizarre, you know. I mean, this you're witnessing the, the total destruction of the uh, American justice system and the judicial branch of the uh, United States of America, at least the lower parts of it uh, in the federal courts, uh, which Congress established, not the Supreme Court. So, you know, Congress does have the ability to abolish uh, that or hold funding and those kind of things. So they have leverage, uh, but uh, it continues every single day. And uh, this isn't just a, this isn't about Donald J. Trump. This is about us. Uh, he said it before. I say it. You all say it. Uh, you know, uh, this is about us. All you have to do is look at the other 18, 18 indictees in Fulton County, Georgia. Look at what's happening to the uh, nonviolent uh, January 6 defendants. Uh, I mean, you're about to see today, I think, uh, some proud boys who who one of, one of whom Joe Biggs I don't believe ever went into the Capitol building uh, yeah. or, or more uh, proud boys that are going to get sentenced likely to more than thirty years in prison they've been held in prison uh, pre trial during the trial and post uh, conviction uh, for this trumped up charge and I don't um, no pun intended there trumped up charge of seditious conspiracy. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, it's a total destruction of everything that I risked my life for. My father risked his life for people that uh, my friends have died for uh, uh, in this Constitution of the United States. And, and it goes all the way down, obviously, to the local level now when you see this district attorney uh, down in Fulton County, Georgia, getting away with it without the Republican governor or Republican leader of the House and Senate in that state saying a damn word you know it's That's interesting to say that colonel manis and and thanks a ton for being on our show we'd love to have you sorry wayne wasn't here he's had some uh some difficulties this morning uh but for i i shared ron rob's uh twitter feed for those who don't follow him follow him for updates what i love about you is that you dig in kind of that second third layer on stuff like with the proud boys he was digging into they're, they're accusing them for taking down the fences as some sort of terrorist activity. That just came out today. D do you want to kind of dive into what that means? Uh, yeah. And number one, uh, the snow fencing was taken down by an as yet unidentified, but we think was some sort of law enforcement officer uh, before the metal bike racks uh, were taken down. The metal bike racks were were pushed over or moved out of the way, uh, starting with where Ray Epps was uh, was located at. Uh, with a young man named, I think his name was Ryan Sanson. Uh, if, if, forgive me if I got that slightly wrong, but it's pretty similar to that uh, at the Peace Monument. Uh, and then uh, the Proud Boys are being accused of orchestrating this whole thing. And this judge, uh, these judges, uh, uh, Meta. Judge Kelly, who I think is a Trump uh, appointee, too, which that doesn't really matter, guys. I mean, these people right. in D.C. are leftist. Uh, they're actually communist Marxists is what they are. They, they have completely destroyed the Constitution. I can't believe that that the Republican Congress is allowing this to continue. But anyway, uh, so the judges are saying that the removal of these bicycle racks uh, is a terrorist act. I mean, Judge Kelly just sentenced uh uh actually I, I don't know the name of the judge but one of the judges just sentenced a 61 year old grandmother uh mrs meggs whose husband got 13 years in prison but she didn't do anything except for go into the capitol building spent 18 minutes in there no no violence no you know shoving no, nothing to do with other than just going in and observing it she got 15 months in prison on top of 
45 days time served and almost two years uh, with an ankle bracelet on uh, uh, unsupervised uh, at her home. Uh, so she got 15 months in prison and two more years of supervise, supervision with an ankle br bracelet on top of that and got called a terrorist for walking into the Capitol building. That is the problem with what's happening here. Uh, and, uh, uh, and what I mentioned about the Proud Boys, you know, I am not supportive of people that were violent, uh, you know, that broke windows to get into the Capitol building and all that. Matter of fact, I think most of those are probably not regular citizens. They were part right. of the setup. This was a setup. It's clear now. We've seen enough body cam footage from Metro police officers and others uh, with them openly talking about this, how they were setting things up and encouraging people to, to do certain things and, and that kind of thing. So it's obviously a setup. Uh, so, so I'm not supportive of those folks, but what I am supportive of is, is getting these folks out of this issue where they are like Biggs. Joe Biggs is an American veteran. Uh, I've had him on my show a couple times. I, 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 I know him, uh, from years back. Uh, I've followed the Proud Boys. I've met, I've met Tyrio. I've met him. I've, I've seen their work per firsthand. They're not they're not terrorists. I mean, they're, they're security people is they right. provide security is what they do, uh, for the most part. And, uh, to see this happen to these guys with this seditious conspiracy charge. And, and I'm just telling you the seditious conspiracy charge. Uh, one of the judges just read out yesterday, I think it was Kelly, uh, uh, in talking about that. It's that it was, it, it's easy to prove, you know, but the key word is in both lines is, by force, try to take over the government. And I'm paraphrasing now, obviously, very right. loosely. But the key word is by force. And then the next one is by force, prevent the laws of the, of the land from being executed. And that's where they got them on, you know, with this obstruction charge, uh, which has never been used for anything other than Enron type, uh, you know, uh, uh, of trying to uh, obstruct a, a committee meeting or something like that. Uh, uh, and it was about evidence, really. Uh, but they've, they've expanded this obstruction of a uh, official proceeding law to include this. And that's where they got the Proud Boys on seditious conspiracy, because obviously they were organized uh, as a security group. They were providing security for speakers all over the place, uh, along with other groups uh, that day, uh, like the uh, Oath Keepers uh, were also part of that. Uh, not, but it's not, looking like we're going to get 30 plus year sentences on Enrique Thierry, who has been an FBI informant before. It's my understanding. Uh, and uh, wasn't even there. Uh, and uh, Joe Biggs, who uh, didn't even go into the building. And or, isn't it, or, isn't it interesting? Probably. It's interesting that they say stop a, a, a function of Congress or whatever the charge was when. Mm -hmm. They now have, during testimony, they have a police commander of the Capitol Police giving the order to fire munitions on the unarmed crowd precisely at the moment Ted Cruz was about ready to deliver his inquiry. You know, so for them to oh, say yeah. that when the whole thing was designed to stop the Senate so they couldn't have precedent or standing, rather, uh, for any of these investigations, it's just so diabolical. When you see it, I, I mean, what are your thoughts about the, the just the deteriorating, deteriorating nature of our supposed government? I mean, both sides of the aisle. You mentioned Georgia. Well, I, I'm really pissed off about what you just pointed out. January 6th obstructed the presentation of the objection evidence. Yes. Right. Okay. The reason why in 2016 the Democrats couldn't object is because none of the House members had a Senate member that would sign up to their objections based on what they thought was voter fraud and those kind of things. In this case, we actually had two senators that were supporting, uh, and I can't remember the exact states they were from, uh, House members from certain states uh, in their objections. So it was going to have to be heard. And that's why... I believe that Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi wanted it shut down uh, 
Uh, and, uh, and at some point, someday, we will get all of the documentation of the communications between these folks, unless they've destroyed it somehow, and it's impossible to destroy everything these days. Uh, it can be found. Uh, and, and we will see that that's exactly what they were worried about. Mitch McConnell even said that it's the best thing that could have ever happened afterwards because yeah, it prevented Ted Cruz and those congressmen and women from presenting the evidence that backed up their objections that Mike Pence had already said, I have to hear that. Now, the yeah, other part, the other, other, I'm sorry, just go, oh, ahead. No, go ahead. The other part of that, is the assholes, and, and I'm sorry, but this really pisses me off. I've dedicated uh, my entire life to the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and, and the jerks, when they reconvened, didn't have the balls to go forward with the objection process. And I, that I was gonna say, is even worse up, than January 6th itself. What, what Colonel Manitz is bringing up here is such a critical point for people to understand, because the average normie, just normal citizen thinks that all these cases were heard, the evidence was presented, and there was some ruling that there was no election fraud. And in fact, that's not the case. These cases weren't allowed to be heard because they didn't have standing. And right. if Ted Cruz would have got to enter that into the congressional record, that would have had a cascade effect of standing established for a number of these cases to be heard. And it's it's typical communist approaches that they're doing and that's one thing you talk a lot about on your show is just how we're being taken over by communists like no two ways about it and and you touched oh, yeah. on it a little bit with the prosecution where you normal people are saying like oh did they commit the law they get trump gets his day in court that kind of thing but they're overlooking the fact that we are applying these laws and principles in ways they either have never been applied before in in some cases in the hundred years these laws have been on yeah. the books or in ways that they were never intended to be applied. And I mean, it's a, it's a communist tactic 101 where, where you're, you're going to use this law that's been sitting there. We've never charged anybody with a million people have broke this law. And now we're going to charge somebody for it and have the narrative be, well, they get their day in court. So can you expand on yeah. that? Yeah. Well, it's very careful not to conflate the electoral college challenge right. process in Congress and the, and the judicial system on the election itself. No case that I'm aware of. Uh, now, if there's one now that I haven't caught over the last few years, uh, two years, uh, forgive me, but no case that I'm aware of was actually heard on the merits of the evidence in right. Donald Trump's challenges to the 2020 election. They were all booted out on technicalities, most of them standing, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, the, the challenge process in the Congress, though, is the one that had the most success to actually being successful and send votes back to the states for recertification and confirmation or maybe even another election in those states because they had changed their rules. So, I mean, that is a big deal right there. Uh, so, so let's get back to the day in court thing. Just take a look at what's happening with Mr. Trump in the, in the January 6th indictment in D.C., uh, with Judge uh, Chetkin, I believe is her, is her last name, who is whose father is a communist, Marxist. Jamaican she was raised communist. in a Marxist household. She's not born here in the United States. She's an immigrant. Uh, and her actions uh, throughout this, from the moment she started talking uh, a few days ago in her court, on the record, uh, belie their desire to interfere in the 2024 election. For two years now, Three, going on three, this woman, this judge, has delayed January 6th defendants' trials, even nonviolent ones, kept people in prison all that time in the D.C. Gulag and other places around the country for two years now uh, because of the volume of what the DOJ says, the prosecutors say, oh, it's the volume of the evidence, we've got to go through it and all that. But with Mr. Trump, she assigns a date for the trial of March 24th, March 3rd, 2024, just the other day. And they have 12 million, just the documents, they have 12 million pages. Now there's a, there's a billing rate that public defenders have to use. There's a billing rate chart that applies to this. And you can talk to a federal prosecutor or, or public defender that does federal court stuff and, and get the exact details on it. But I mean, 
it gives you the requirements to review one page and how much time you can charge for it. I mean, I think shipwreck crew uh, put, put it out the other day, or maybe somebody, somebody else in the lawyer crowd that I follow, follow uh, Leslie Gordon or, uh, uh, or Margo Cleveland uh, and, and said, it would be like 18 years <laughs> just for that set of documents. Okay. But, but here's the deal that judge has done two things. On the one hand, she has stated openly in court, Mr. Trump's a regular citizen. He's not going to get any deference for being president of the United States. We're not going to bring politics into the thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which all sounds really good, doesn't it? This is right. what the this is what the communists do. They say things that sound really good. Go back and look at the Francis Gary Powers, a U2 pilot trial show trial in the Soviet Union and read and read what was said there. Uh, and you'll see uh, that uh, that she is definitely a Marxist uh, there's, and not following the Constitution. But but then in the very next paragraph, if you look at the transcript, she will say something like, yeah, uh, we don't we don't the public has an interest in a speedy trial, which is not true. Uh, the amendment in the Constitution is for the defendant, the citizen to be pr protected to have a speedy trial, not the government or the public. OK, so there's one thing right there. Uh, but Mr. Trump has lots of resources that the average citizen doesn't have. She actually said those two things. He's going to be treated like an everyday citizen. But then he, she goes, no, I'm going to shorten this timeline because he's got lots of resources that p normal people don't have. She actually said that it's in the transcripts. OK, unbelievable. Uh, it, it is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and then that date that she said is the day before Super Tuesday in the primaries. OK. <laughs> Uh, the exact same day before. And she has said on the record, politics isn't going to, we're not going to do things based on politics. Well, why did she set that date? Because when you look at, go look at Twitter today, even the CNN legal analysts are saying, this is not right as right. far as the timeline goes. Because those guys on his team, they've got three other cases, three other trials that they've got to look at around the country, uh, New York, DC, and Florida, uh, and now Georgia. Uh, 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 and they're going to have to start filing motions on the trial itself here soon. I mean, really soon. So this is not a March 3rd start date. It's way earlier, uh, than that. Uh, I mean, that's, and that's just an example of the type of crap that's being handed out and, the, and the normies, uh, they may see something on CNN or MSNBC or something in the New York times that they go, like you said, Jason, well, he's going to get his day in court. No, we're way beyond that, Americans. My fellow Americans, we are way beyond the ability for you and me to sit back and go, well, Mr. Trump's going to get his day in court because the court in D.C. for sure and the court in Atlanta, Georgia, in Fulton County, Georgia, for sure, and the court in New York City under Alvin Bragg, the other Marxists, those are all three Marxist DAs or prosecutors or judges there. Uh, and you can go, don't trust me, go look them up. Uh uh, they, he is not going to get his day in court there fairly for sure. He might get it in the Florida classified documents case, but that case, the charge itself to charge a president of the United States with the Espionage Act is so ludicrous. The judge should have dismissed it already. Okay? It makes you worry about our entire and she has it. judicial system. It really does Come worry about it. No, it doesn't exist anymore, guys. You're it doesn't gone. exist anymore. You're it's right. gone. I'll tell unless, you, unless this Congress can step in and defund this stuff and stop it as soon as possible and then reorient the, the judiciary below the Supreme Court, which is its right and responsibility under the Constitution to do, uh, unless they do that now, it is totally gone. Your right to a fair trial, your right to, to defense and adequate defense, all of that is out the window as of the moment this judge in Washington, D.C. just did this to Donald J. Trump because it all sets a precedent. Every bit of that's on the record and it's precedent. And uh, I'm telling you, the lefties better watch out because when the righties take back over again in any way, form, or shape, they're going to use these precedents against it. You guys should Indeed. be yelling for your Congress people to stop it too. That's, that's a very important element yeah. of how a lot of people are feeling too. It really is. It's something... Uh, it's deep. It's burning inside. Colonel Manessa, I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. 
And if you could tell the audience how they can get in touch with you and how to get to your show and things like that, we'd love to have you back. Well, just like Wayne's show, I'm on the Red Voice Media Network now, and my show is live uh, Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern for one hour. Uh, we simulcast on uh, X Spaces so the audience can engage. Uh, the last two shows, I've been able to do that, and I've take, taken four questions in each show for or comments from the audience on X Spaces, so please join us there. Uh, you can find uh, all of that at Rob Manus at R-O-B-M-A-N-E-S-S -S on X. I keep wanting to say Twitter, uh, but I, but I'm that handle on Getter, Truth, uh, Truth Social on Facebook. My big page is at C O L Rob Manus, uh, and uh, all of the videos that that uh, I do for Red Voice Media, you can watch them live uh, on X Spaces. You can get us on uh, Roku Network, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Uh, man, I've lost count <laughs> of where of where the network is now, but but we're there, we're live. Uh, it's a it's a great show. I mean, last night we uh, we did space lasers from Chinese satellites firing on Hawaii oh. from orbit, and it's and it's all fact based too. We don't and do it's a conspiracy, thing, right? Yeah, we don't do conspiracy. I bring in a you know me and another colonel. I mean, talk about credible, uh, <laughs> you know, and we talk about. The, the capabilities and those kind of things. That's just from last night. So go check it out. Uh, it's there. And Red Voice Media Network on Rumble is a, a place to find all of our shows, obviously, uh, where you can, uh, where they get posted uh, at, even after they're live. But the stream runs live on there too every single day for 24 hours uh, a day with a live, 12 hours of live and then 12 hours of replay. So uh, at Rob Manus, uh, come follow us, share, comment, like it. Uh, I'm suppressed uh, on X uh, quite dramatically. Welcome to the club, uh, baby. <laughs> they're keeping me just short of the 5 million views <laughs> over a three-month period uh, and working hard to do it. So, uh, yeah, I know I've, I've been uh, – Wayne's a mentor of mine. Uh, you know, I never dreamed I'd be in the media business until I met a guy named, <laughs> named uh, Wayne Dupree, uh, Wayne Dupree uh, Air Force vet, fellow Air Force veteran. I miss talking to him today. So mm -hmm. tell him I said hello. I hope everything's all right. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I've suppressed. So do that at Rob Manus thing and share and like that thing and, and go to all those other other places, too, and share stuff. Uh, uh, I try to post regularly on all of them, but most of my posts get done the most regularly on Facebook at C.O.L. Rob Manus and uh, at Rob Manus on X. All right, Colonel. Well, thank you very much. And I, like I said, we'd love to have you back. I'm sure Wayne wants to talk to you. And uh, thanks for coming on, sir. Thanks for coming on. Rob. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. 
Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks for Oh, hell. What's up? Man. Wayne is here. Man. Colonel, Colonel Manners, I am. I, I, man, everything that happened this morning is just crazy. And I am so sorry that I miss. I miss my boys. Uh, my, my boys interview. I'm serious. I am so sorry. Um, we got to have him back on so that, I mean, when I, I mean, I was so giddy and everything when I scheduled the interview. I was like, "Yeah, we're going." I mean, I, I, I announced it last week. I was like, "Yeah, we're going to have my, Rob Manners on Thursday," and then I couldn't even get on. I couldn't even get on. And then on top of that, I found out that uh, I think, I mean, I'm not sure when he went on, but Facebook blocked the video. Yeah, I was just looking at that, and uh, you can see which pages it got. Uh got suppressed from kind of crazy he doesn't yeah. mince words no i mean I, I i was like wait a minute facebook facebook block and it said it was a copyright match on i was like what did we do we didn't do anything i mean, right. I mean now the only thing that i like like i went back early and i was and i was looking but i was like well whatever whatever Whatever, whatever. Um, welcome back to the show. Hutch Bailey. Oh, my God. Oh, my gracious. Hold on. I forgot something else. <laughs> what a day. What a freaking day. Uh, Hutch Bailey Jr., the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr., and also... My my buddy from another mother, uh, we're talking about Mr. Jason Robinson from Muslim Soda. So happy to have them on, and they take they um. We do our best, Wayne. But oh, yeah, it's funny man. online, uh, like the the social media platforms that distribute all of our content. Like it's being super wild today. Now. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Um there we go. All right. Um with that said, everybody was um uh, I, I know you played the video earlier from uh um uh, Glitch McConnell. Dude, I I tweeted out yesterday, I was like, it's sad, it's sad. Okay, it um and it's and I know Mitch. <laughs> oh, man, I'm gonna be insensitive, right? Um, there's a karma thing, you know. You mess with Donald Trump, you know, and whatever. I mean, it's gonna come back and get you sooner or later, publicly, whatever. But we've been saying on here for a long time. There's a whole lot of older people that have made it a career in Congress, and it, and it was never meant for it to happen like that. And what you're seeing with him, I I mean, to me, I don't think it's a joke. I think it's like dementia. It's amazing I, how he looks different, like from two days ago. He does the same way with Biden, the same way with Feinstein. I mean, you look at these people and, you know, don't don't misunderstand what Wayne's saying about karma for messing with Trump. Right. Messing with Trump is messing with good. Right. Trump yeah. is good. They are evil. Yeah. That's what this is about. Every one of them is evil, and Trump represents good. And I fully believe that there's divine intervention going on. I think there yeah. has been throughout this entire country's history. I mean, God uses anybody. I mean, God uses. I'm not. Saying, I'm not saying President Trump is scum, but God uses the worst of the worst in the Bible. He he used the worst of the worst to get his message across. Um, he picked somebody out of nowhere and they ran from him, um, according to the Bible. They ran from him to the to the jaws of a whale. 
And, yep. um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it was, okay, all right, all right. Three days in here, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do. You know, you know what I'm saying? But he picks the people who he feels is going to turn around. And then when you look at him, you're like, wait a minute. This person is talking about Jesus. He's talking about God. He's talking about bringing the country back together again. He's telling the people that I love you. Uh, I mean, he's doing stuff that other people won't do. And 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 he's being ridiculed for it. He's being slammed for it. He's being he's being mocked for it. And it's almost uh, it's almost like what this country does to aborted children. They've been aborting children on in mass since the mid seventies. This country has gone to hell since the mid seventies. Seriously, you can't do sin like that and it not come back on payback big time okay really fentanyl result of heroin result of um uh cocaine result of um uh um aids result of a lot of things that have gone on with this country guess what god is saying you're killing innocent lives people he kills and I, I I mean I told you suffer the little children come unto me forbid them not for such a and we I mean I ain't killing them but y'all are putting in laws to kill them laws to kill babies you can't think that you're gonna get away with that whatever you think right. whatever your moral framework is you can just look at history and the universe takes care of societies without morals exactly. Sodom and Gomorrah it's in the Bible you know even if you look the at the Roman Rome, Empire like, yeah 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 yep we um we're we're happy to uh again we're happy to have we were happy to have um uh, Colonel Manis on believe me my friend we're gonna get you back okay uh we're doing very good with these interviews. We've been doing, I mean, we're getting a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback on many of these interviews that we got going. And you, you were a catch. You were a catch. We started off with President Trump at the beginning of the week, and we want to end with you toward the end of the week, and you were the catch. So I, I do want you to know that you are, uh, you are one of our top choices. Um, along with our young brother from the NFSC. We're talking about Mr. Roy Guo. Um, what's up, little brother? What's going on? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Just admiring Fine. that shirt, brother. I know. I was going to say, is that, another, <laughs> is that another Miles Go shirt? Uh, yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is from the same collection of, uh, you know, uh, Buddha collection. So for summertime, it's uh, pretty light and uh, pretty comfortable. It's from G Fashion. Yeah, you be rocking those shirts, boy. That, that, <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank that, you so that, much. That, yeah, that's also awesome. Listen, um, you know, we, I, I mean, and I really wasn't even meant to go into the divine side of it, but um, the NFSC is um, strong in their Christian faith, too. Um, why don't you talk about that real quick? Uh, how, uh, because I know Miles talks about, uh, um, his Christian faith too. So why don't you talk about that real quick? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, people, or CCP is given a, you know, impression um, to the world that Chinese people has no faith, you know, religion or like they're atheists. That's completely a lie, right? So the, the majority of, you know, Chinese people, they don't have, probably they don't have a strict religion. Like you want to like separate them into groups. But they believe in karma, they believe in incarnation, you know, they believe like not doing like bad things because that's something will bad will happen to them. Some some like universe is controlling uh, people's faith and watching them. And mm -hmm. you remember, like the majority of Chinese, like uh, they're they're Buddhists, right? So they believe in Buddha and then they go to temples uh, and also some of them, they're uh, Christians. They go to like the, the place I uh, lived in when I grew up. You know, like there were like just in my block, there were three, you know, um, you know, three religious uh, temples or religious, you know, uh, churches, right? They believe in three different religions. Uh, the, the one I think is Muslim, one is, you know, Christian and one is uh, Catholic. 
right? So like we and Chinese people, they they're peace loving. They're they're just uh, pious. Some of them they're really pious. For example, the Tibetans, the Uyghurs, you know, the minorities, right? But you know, CCP would never t- tell the world about it. It would never appear on CCP's propaganda. They would just right. say, oh, like we are we're communists. We're we're atheists. So we like the we, we don't believe in the Western you know values and religions. That's totally a lie. That's the way they manipulate and kidnap the people. Right? right, so right. they don't they don't really represent the Chinese people. They're the enemy mm-hmm. of Chinese people. That's what I've been always uh, talking about. Roy, I know there's a lot of political things going on in the in the world, but I, I'd like to get an update, if you would. Speaking of the people, uh, of the massive flooding that occurred the last few weeks, Have, is there an update on uh, recovery efforts or things of that nature? That was a a real human tragedy. Uh, some of the video that we saw. Yeah, so uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Hutch, for asking uh, that because that's uh, that's really it, it is a tragedy, and it happened and almost every year. Every year there was like a, a flooding going on, and then like because because of the uh, because of the corruption, because of like they don't really care. The CCP doesn't really care about the people. They wouldn't really spend money on the sewer construction, or we talked about like the uh, tofu drag, you know, construction it just fall down on, on itself, uh, and it will, it will crumble like in in 10, 20 years. Like the the quality of uh, you know the buildings and the constructions are really bad. And uh, they, they, they just they just don't care about the general public. And lots of people died. Like like always, they fake the numbers. They say like there were like 30 or 50 people died. But like we're, we're seeing like videos of pe- people like taking videos to send out on, you know, uh, Getter or, or YouTube. Like the, the, the whole village is gone. The whole village is wiped out. Right. And then you can imagine like how bad it is. And also like uh, now... Uh, like Xi Jinping is was in BRICS and he, he's giving like what ten billion dollars for for the development yeah. of the of the relationship and w- where's the money for the the public where's the money for the uh, victims of the flooding what what about their uh, life what about their houses being destroyed and they they just they just uh, everything's gone right they they just they don't have anything anymore. And but the only thing they do is to silence them, is to warn them, is to have them like sign agreements or arrest them or silence them when they decided to uh, come out and say something or post mm-hmm. any video or any like opinions on social media, any opinion that is not aligned with the, you know, uh, the, the party is a, it's an element of instability. Uh, Right, they need to control the narratives. They need to control um, to maintain the stability. That's what they call it. And also, CCP spend like a lot of money, like just in just so called like uh, maintaining the stability. So that's the total control. That's the total like you know, it's a disaster. So it also, like I, I think uh, the the Chinese people is being you know enlightened just like by the the, the uh, shows you are doing uh, Wayne and Hutch and, and Jay like you uh, you've been doing like fantastic job to just we, we brought those those messages inside China and make Chinese people understand the CCP does not represent them uh, they have alternative and uh, new federacy of China like we're seeing like uh, growing uh, you know supporters and members are joining us so um yeah so that's uh, that, that's totally tragic and I think if uh, something um, worse going to happen. I think there's going to be uh, a new lockdown. There's going to be new COVID, you know, um, you know, uh, policies, and uh, they're going to be like a new variant, and you know, more control over the people. Uh, there will be a famine as well um, because of the flooding, because of the corruption of the CCP. You know, it's it's interesting, Roy, and to kind of talk about like what Colonel Mann has talked about and what you are talking about. It's chilling for me to see and get more exposure to what's going on in the CCP. What's life like life under the Chinese or Communist Party rule, much like in Russia when it was the USSR, it was life's bad. And then you talk about show trials. Well, that's what happens in China. You talk about suppression on social media. We lived through that this morning. We had three Facebook pages that are like, nope, you can't broadcast on here. You, you talk about about not helping your citizens. Well, we just shipped a bunch of money to Ukraine while Hawaii burns. And and it's like looking in the in what's going on in China, it's like a glimpse into our future. Uh, but speaking into China's 
future. And I just saw some stuff on the NFSC where you were talking about the financial collapse pending in China. And I found that really compelling where you, you were talking about how they're, the unemployment rate so high and, and how things are about to get really rough for them. Yeah, it is. It, it is uh, completely like it's going uh, headed for a kaboom. I think it's uh, going to collapse everything right? like the real estate sector, the, you know, uh, shadow banking, the banks, uh, you know, we've already seen that people are lining up to withdraw their cash and they couldn't get any uh, because uh, the bank, the, the money literally is not there anymore. And it's it's not for like the Chinese. Like I think the Xi Jinping would just uh, you know burst the bu bubble on purpose and make the whole world suffer. It, right. it will happen in the United States uh, by the end of this year or the beginning of next year. That's what like our our the, our predicted like timeline. And by the end of next year, before the election, she would just uh, uh, t attack Taiwan. That's kind of like uh, his personal you know deadline. Um, for him. And by that time, like the world economy going to collapse. And uh, like, plus, uh, we see we saw what's happening, like on BRICS and all the other, you know, she is trying to, you know, formulate this uh, five axis of evil, and include as many like countries as possible, which has like resources, energy, you know, cheap products and services. And that represents like half the population of the world. And it's like basically the topic, the, the, the focus is just uh, de-dollarization and make RMB the um, a more stronger dollar. And that will cause uh, like unimaginable poverty to the world and to the United States and to the West. That's it's like it's more it's, it's way worse than the Ukraine weapon. So right. we're seeing the economy in China definitely is going to collapse. Remember, like the white gloves and the kleptocrats like, like Xi Jinping. Yeah. They're, right. they, they've been, they've been st stealing the money all the time. They've been like uh, tr transferring all the clean assets outside of China, and they've stolen twenty to twenty-five trillion dollars from the Chinese people. Of course, the economy is it's a hollow. It's fake. Everything's fake. The Hang Seng Index is fake. The stock market is fake. It's controlled by the computers and algorithms. So it's gonna collapse very soon. What about this um, now? Um, I think I'm. I mean, I, I feel naive because, um, I mean, I'm listening to my co-hosts, which, which are knowledgeable and smart. Um, I just feel that Americans aren't going to fall for a lockdown in place lockdown. I, I, something in me is saying, I can't, I, I can't see Americans doing it again. But um, this, this new COVID lockdown, uh, is this well? Is, is it the CCP again working with? Uh, do you think? The, uh, is it first the CCP? Well, Good. Yeah. First of all, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> not like a smart, but just because I, I knew. Like I listened to Miles. I listened to the intelligence on the CCP. Those intelligence. Uh, was from like you know the, the the people inside Chinese Communist Party in China in certain positions, and they they're risking their lives to deliver mm -hmm. their those intelligence. Uh, and if we had listened to those you know intelligence and the information, we would save more lives and have less like casualties and less tragedies. Uh, but remember, like when people at Davos, right? They they say uh, China is an example. Like she is doing a really great job during COVID. They're not talking about like to reduce the casualties or to reduce you know the the uh, you know the harms um, of uh, the COVID of any kind. They're talking about the control. They're talking about like it's uh, the the socialism, extreme socialism, and the um, the extreme you know uh, lockdown and zero COVID policy is a really good example for all the dictators around the world to control the people. The, she gave an example, right? And that's why those elites is praising him. They're, they're praising him. They're, they're admire uh, she to have this ultimate control over the people and just to utilize a very, very cheap, you know, they, they send the uh, virus, they just uh, intentionally release those uh, you know, those uh, variants, those uh, strains, those uh, viruses from the Wuhan lab, and then they can control like a billion people. And then they can weaken the West and weaken the United States to such a point that mm -hmm. it exceeds their expectation, right? The problem, and the, 
<laughs> yes, and the politicians and those cor corrupt politicians, they, they look up to uh, Xi and think, is this, this is a really good way to control people. And if you want to look at the extreme uh, communism and extreme socialism and how they treat, how uh, Xi Jinping and Wang Qishan, how they treat the, um, the political opponents, like you can just look at China's history, right? Like they just arrest people. They just use those uh, digital system, uh, red and green, you know, uh, digital health card or something. And if you're red, you cannot move anywhere. You cannot leave your house, right? And then if you want to arrest someone, you just send police, go there and just uh, ask them to go to the uh, to the concentration camp for uh, for uh, 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 you know a lockdown or for whatever, and then you, they can just arrest you. They can just put you in in a box in the prison for forever. And that's how she actually gained the control, right? Basically, she purged millions of you know Communist Party members uh, who were his you know uh, or his factions political opponents, and. You know the world leaders seeing this as an effective way to uh, purge the uh, opponents, and we're stepping into that um, in a really, really fast uh, fashion. I, I think uh, one of the things that that happened that I don't think they were expecting in the CCP, uh, they had you had three in China. There was three years of zero COVID policy, and with the assumption that, like the United States, when it was over, the economy would roar back. And in China, that's not happening. They were expecting this big comeback economically after the zero COVID. And now, so you've got the population control on one side, but now your their own economy is tanking. And a lot of it is because of that. Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, I want to mention that the CCP's data, all the statistics, they are fake. Like I said, like they... Right. They fake their GDP growth. So like, do you still America believe like, China experiencing like five percent growth every year? It's mm -hmm. it's not like it's almost like zero percent. If it's not negative, it's it's zero yeah. percent. Like no, nothing's growing, right? Everyone's leaving, and the consumers, like they are the the general public, the the deplorables. They don't have any money anymore. The only thing they have is debt, and and you know harm because of the draconian you know zero co zero COVID policies. And uh, like, and they, they don't really, the Chinese people, they don't really trust the government you know, along with the foreign investors, the foreign investors just escaping, right? And, uh, and also uh, all, the, all the officials in, in every fashion, in every level, they're just lying. They're just lying and reporting to their, you know, superiors and they lie about everything. And mm. you, don't, you don't really know uh, what the real number is. But, but the thing is like now we're seeing like, China, the CCP's economy is collapsing. Like the, all the uh, real estate sector, the uh, the companies, developers, the, which uh, accounts with the real estate sector accounts for like thirty percent of the of the whole GDP, and it's gone, right? And uh, now, like we're we're, we're really worried about the seven trillion dollars invested in the CCP, like from the United States, if we still can get back the the money, right? Because the, because she would not. And could not return the money if he decided to attack Taiwan. If he decided to like have a really uh, a more you know straightforward conflict with the West and the uh, United States. You know, it's it's interesting that you just touched on Taiwan because you had said something earlier, and one of the things we were going to ask you about was the UK declared Taiwan its own country, which is kind of a change in position. There's been the one China policy where. They kind of treat Taiwan like a bad kid of China's. And UK came out and said Taiwan's its own country. <clears throat> but you said earlier it was the strongest statement you've made on the show that you think Xi is going to attack Taiwan before next year's election. So where do you think that conflict's at or, or what do you think's going to be driving that? Well, um, first of all, I think uh, Xi, like there are only, I think, two or three outcomes for Xi because Xi has his own reason for the, this urgency because he has health problems. We He's talked sick. about yeah. this, yeah. right? He um, he could he could die because of certain illness uh, any time. And also, his one of his biggest fear is like mutiny or being taken out by his own political opponents, right? Uh, that's that's one of the reason why he like changed his agenda. Like, and he was confused when he has he he was at uh, the BRICS uh, summit. And uh, he, he's afraid of be, being killed, right? And also, if 
<laughs> if he started war, like then like he, he'd be killed in the military operations, right? right. So that would I think that would be his uh, like you know ending. Um, those, those those are the options. Like if he he would be he would be killed uh, or by like illness or he would be killed by the political opponents or like if he started war then his his uh, war crime like he committed war crime and he would be killed in the military operations, and then um for Taiwan like. For example, like I can mention a little bit about the importance of Taiwan. Like, if you look at China, if you look at the Taiwan Strait, right, mm -hmm. half, like fifty percent of the world containers go through the strait, right? right. And you know, um, and Taiwan produces like ninety-two percent of most of the you know advanced semiconductors. And also, like if you look at like the uh, geopolitical uh, like position, like where uh, this is narrow strait in the middle, and uh, which you know leads you to South Korea and and Japan, uh, that's kind of like the entrance to um, to the whole Asia, right? And Taiwan has a like seven hundred billion dollar GDP, ranks I think at the eighth place um, in Asia, and mm -hmm. so it's. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a kind of like the most important ally, uh, like in right. Asia, and very important, uh, you know, element for Xi to complete his whole, you know, supply chain, um, and his whole like RMB internationalization. Uh, it's, it's the most and last, uh, most important and last uh, important piece of the whole puzzle. So that's why I think, um, and also like the uh, the economy is collapsing, and all, uh, and also the uh, conflict between. CCP and, and the West is like the tensions rising uh, like the whole time. And at some point there will be a, a decision, decision making point for him uh, to when like America is weakened and, you know, like it's infiltrated and then the West is kind of weak. And, and you know, the, um, the there's going to be a new COVID, a new vaccine, you know, new lockdowns and the economy is going to be, you know, collapse and everything uh, headed for a kaboom. And then that would be the moment when she feels, okay, this is uh, my, uh, this is my time, right, right, for life, and then he's gonna take the risk. You know, my son, my son asked me the other day. He was like, "Dad, did you hear about the COVID thing?" I said, "Yeah." He was like, "Why? Why is it that this um, vaccine keeps needing a, a software upgrade every couple of months or whatnot?" I said, "Yeah, I know, right?" But um, you, you mentioning G's health and whatnot. Uh, if he passes, what happens to the CCP? Well, that's a very important question. Like just like yesterday, we saw uh, UK uh, announce uh, Taiwan as a, you know, as a country as opposed to like one China policy, whatever from the CCP. Like, you know, we feel like now, first of all, CCP does not represent Chinese people. CCP right. is going to be gone very right. soon. And Chinese people, all of the Chinese people would eventually realize that like their CCP is their enemy and it never uh, represented its interest. And then it's, it's been stolen $25 trillion, right? Mm. Um, now, if you look at the politics inside China, inside CCP, like uh, the Xi's faction and Wang Qishan's faction, Wang Qishan was the uh, former vice president. It's kind of, there, there's kind of like a 50-50 power like balance. It's very uh, fragile, but that's kind of the balance there. Uh, but if she's gone, I, I'm sure like lots of uh, kleptocrats or the proxies will come out and uh, pretend to be the you know um, give, give the provide the freedom and democracy we wanted, and then they actually still holding to the power and holding to the the, the money they've stolen. So I think one one of the most important this is also uh, written and Miles mentioned it all the time. Miles Wood, the founder of New Federal State of China, is also written mm -hmm. in the Declaration of the New Federal State of China in 2020. Uh, that there must be a peace agreement, first of all, permanent peace agreement between China and Chinese people and the whole world and the United States, of course, right? Because nobody wants war, of course. And also, the, the stolen $25 trillion need to give them back to the Chinese people because those, yep. uh, those are the right. money belongs to the deplorables that's been stolen by the white gloves and the kleptocrats. And also, there will be freedom of speech, freedom of religion, you know, and also all the regions, including, you know, Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, Guangdong province, the Cantonese, the Uyghurs, you know, the Tibetans, they should remain their own status and autonomy. And there should be like a peaceful relation, a friendly relationship. And right. 
they should, all the people like in all the regions should like vote for themselves right that's that's written in the declaration of nfsc and that's the principle miles been talking about all along and and at the end people will say okay nfsc is the alternative and the new federal state of china is actually represent and can represent and still remember miles and nfsc is only one um and the first one tell the world about all the intelligence on the CCP and really care about the benefits of the Chinese people and American people and the people in the world. Well, listen, little brother, we got to let you go. Uh, again, an, 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 another informative segment from uh, from our uh, young man, um, Roy Guo. And um, please don't ever think that, uh, don't ever think that what you're saying is not getting out there because there are a lot of people that love information and then there's a lot of people that love to see the uh, so-called underdog uh, rise up uh, in the way that y'all are doing over there and uh, I mean I'll never get over just how bold y'all are uh, I mean I you know, I talk about it a, a lot. I talk about it in the barbershop. Uh, just how bold y'all are to stand up. And you're not going away. And that's, again, that speaks a lot to Miles. But it speaks to a whole lot to what's in your heart. And what's in uh, what's in your mind to get the information out. And uh, we we 100% support the, national, I, um, the new federal state of China. And what y'all are doing at NFSC official dot com we're gonna let you go because we gotta uh we gotta pay some bills over here at the uh at new uh at the red voice media but we look forward to seeing you next week okay thank you so much have a great Roy. weekend roy thanks roy <clears throat> you guys. And gentlemen roy guo of the new federal state of china here on the red voice media network waiting to pre-show hutch baylor jr jason robinson would be right When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number two USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2465. Act swiftly, 833-287-2465. Welcome back to the Wayne Dupree podcast along with Hutch Bailey Jr. and Jason Robinson. Again, I want to give them, um, you know, uh, I want to give I want to give them both a shout out because of the work that they have done and 
them um, sticking in there and hanging in there. I really appreciate both these white dudes. Um, <laughs> we identify as black. Does that count? We're brothers. All right. I, I appreciate both these uh, black dudes. Uh, they they really, I mean, you know, I, I can't, you know, I I just, uh, just want to put that out there. Listen, um, breaking news. Uh, a friend of the show. Uh, hmm. Friend of the show, uh, Joe Biggs, just got sentenced to 17 years uh, for a J6. Do these guys have, a, like, I'm confused. Is it the end of the road or can they appeal this stuff? You know what? I'm, I'm probably sure they can appeal. Because I was I mean, reading, I read an article today that said on the Trump indictments, be patient. And it's and that, it was a, a legal mind. That's how I feel. That I mean, I, I was like, okay, you can indict him, but you but he's gonna appeal. All an indictment is is an accusation. I mean, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Yes, you can indict him. Yes, you can indict him. Yes, you can convict him, but it's gonna be on appeal. And I think well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to dissuade. Remember what lawfare is. Lawfare is not about the verdict. Lawfare is like a poll. It's like a Democrat poll. It's there to shape what you do. And I think that's what they're trying to do with all this. They're trying to convict him in the public opinion world before the actual conviction to affect the election. But I think when you look at the charges, the nature of the charges, they're so bogus, man. They're not even. They're not even lawful. I mean, all four of them. And yeah. I, mean, I know he's not going to get a fair trial, but we have to wait till it plays out. Well, what's difficult, too, for President Trump and more so for these these proud boys, the regular citizens, we saw with General Flynn. And, you know, the other day when we, when we were asking about, like, when was the first time you really thought it was off the rails? And it was like General Flynn was like the canary in the coal mine. That man had to sell his house and and accumulated a hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars in legal fees yeah. to keep his butt out of prison and it ended up his case got thrown out he's suing the government for malicious prosecution and all that but so president trump not only are they going to suck up you know his public opinion they're going to suck up how many millions of dollars and how much time that that money should be going to his campaign or the time should be out connecting with the American people. That's the purpose of lawfare. The, it, it's like if you ever sue a big corporation, the corporation's goal is just how do I run you out of money? If you're an mm -hmm. average citizen suing them, that that's all it is. Like, hey, we'll just keep going and keep sending them stuff till we run them out of money. And then they give up. Um. Joe Biggs and some more of the uh, um, Proud Boys Proud will boys. be sentenced to 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 um, two are being withheld from the last time that I, I saw something happen, but not I'm not sure about, about that, so I can't speak to that. But um, Harrison Floyd running Harrison for Congress is um, got released, and uh, you can check out his GoFundMe. At um, Gibson, Gibson Go. Thank the Lord, it's not on GoFundMe. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, GoFundMe his, would be up for about 30 minutes before they take yeah. it down. His, his goal is 200,000. He's raised 200 and 287,000. He's going to need more than that, probably. Um, and he's going to be on the show next Tuesday. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, um, I did, you, um, did you see he's running for Congress? Yeah, he. Um, I've Enjoyed known him. It. Yeah, I, I've known him for a while. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, while that's why I had my head down because uh, he was he, he was responding to me, and um, he's uh, he's going to be here to talk about the situation or the stuff that he can talk about on Tuesday. We we won't be live on. Monday. I want um I want to let y'all know that's Labor Day and y'all hang out with your families and stuff like that. But um 
Harrison Floyd will be with us next week uh, to talk. And we will also have some, some more great interviews next week, too, as we are getting into. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I'm working on something with um, <laughs> uh, Representative um, Higgins. <laughs> you are not going to get Clay Higgins. He, yeah, his, his people responded to me, and uh, I'm working on something with Clay Higgins. So, yeah. The yeah. next attorney general. <laughs> next God director really. of the FBI. I know, right? Uh, we will also have our rank and choice guy on so that he can tell us about um, that type rank of voting. voting. Yeah, that type of voting procedure. Um, what's called? We're, we're going to have some news about Frank's speech also next week uh, working on that and talking to them a little bit but we're gonna have some news with them uh and dr shiva uh dr shiva we're gonna have him back so that y'all can ask some questions with him too he's uh he's an angry man boy uh he, i mean he, <laughs> man, he he see um i think I think me and him share a little common bond about Tucker Carlson too. Uh, but um, I know where boundaries are because I know where a whole lot of people, they look to Tucker as a hero. So, I mean, if that's, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I just don't, I mean, for me, anybody that sits in front of that media camera for years, that's why, that's why I don't really follow after Megan Kelly right now. Anybody that sits in there, um, thing and they get paid and they know that they're lying. They know it. They know it, but they still read the thing. I can't, I can't. I, I mean, for the love of everything that is conservative in me, I just can't follow them. I can't, I can't get with it, especially with what we've been doing for the last 12 years and staying independent and calling out all, all this stuff. Watching, pe watching people uh, do that stuff on TV and day after day, week after week, you know, you know, the people in the media line, you know, they are, you, you know, they're getting paid to do it. You know, that um, uh, uh, they are, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a dead horse about it. I, I am, I am who I am. And I believe that we're right, and I believe that they're wrong. And I'm not just talking about Democrats. I'm talking about people on our side, too. I believe we're right in calling out both sides. Now, if people want to unfollow us because of that, you know, okay. I mean, go ahead. I wish you wouldn't because accountability is what we need on our side, period. We got to call out people that have been leading us down the wrong road for years. We got to, no matter who they are, you know, that's why Donald Trump came down the escalator. He got tired of watching Republicans, um, um, people like John McCain and Mitt Romney. He got tired of it. Okay. He wanted to, he wanted to set things on the right goal. Why is he going after Fox news right now? Because they're bad. <laughs> He called, he <laughs> came out and called Rupert Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch a globalist. Yes. <laughs> I know he is, but he wasn't doing that like that before. And now he's like, I, you know what? I don't even care. Well, I was going to say just point of parliamentary order. I, I think we need to stop calling the Republican Party our side. They are not. Yeah, the yeah, establishment yeah, yeah. Republican Party is no different than the establishment Democrat Party, other than they pass other different laws that will screw the American citizen. And I think that's, if we could ever break a paradigm in America, other than people seeing like the truth and instead of the, through the media filter, it's mm -hmm. understanding that your average Democrat neighbor who goes to church or goes to a restaurant and mows his lawn and raises his kids, you and him, are, are a team and both his Democrat leaders and our Republican leaders are our enemy. It is not 
where us and that us and average everyday Democrats, we have a difference of tax policy. We we think different things about that. But it's the entire political class, with with small exceptions, are the ones that are taking this country down the bad path. And you're going to be able to see that for your own eyes with the demise of Mitch McConnell. Uh, with Mitch McConnell's demise, you're going to see three more Mitch McConnells pop up in front of you that you've never heard of before. Right. Now, yep. some of you have heard of them, the people, the hardcore people. But John Cornyn of Texas, mm -hmm. John Thune of North Dakota, mm -hmm. and Barrasso from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're going to go after each other's throats or if they already made a deal. But they're going to be the exact same anti-MAGA people that Mitch McConnell was. And it's going to be right there in front of you. And, and, and I know it's hard to admit, especially people up in years that have spent their whole lives supporting this stuff. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. It's just like the people watching Fox news. It's hard for them to break loose. Yeah. It's hard. Uh, they, you need to though. Yeah. And, 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 and why <laughs> uh, there's a reason why when, when you see Ming Kelly and those people look at Fox news, numbers, the numbers are down. Yeah. They're, they're dead. They're gone. I was like, no woman. It's not like that. And and honestly, you know it's not like that. Yeah, it's gonna take a hit. They're gonna take hits, but because they're the only con biggest conservative network thing out there, the numbers are gonna go back up, and they have gone back up because there isn't anybody. Well, actually, Red Voice Media, uh, we are an alternative to Fox News, but I mean the numbers out there. They don't have anywhere else to go, and why? Why don't a whole lot of our protests work? Or uh, because we're not on the same page. Okay, we're not on the same page. It's like, listen, if <laughs> almost almost feel like a parent right now. If I tell you to turn Fox News off, you better turn that damn TV off. But what happens is they don't. They're like, yeah, that's right. Turn on Fox News. Boycott Fox News. Hashtag boycott Fox News. Let's see what's going on on Fox <laughs> News. Man. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, Sean Hannity is wearing a blue suit tonight. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. I but I gotta I gotta draw the line. I gotta see the Larry Sinclair interview. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing that back to life is a feat. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where they found him under a bridge somewhere. He's probably in a probably an a he's probably in an AIDS facility. But listen, um, I know, and and uh, another reason why I can't get with some of these people online too is because they watch us and then they get their their uh, talking about <laughs> for real. They do. They watch us and then they get their talking points. We are ahead of a lot of this stuff. That's true. Okay, I mean, there have been periods, not just one, there have been periods that we have talked about a certain thing, and then we look the next night or the next day, and they're talking about so, so and sometimes we even try to try to trick them <laughs> and go to left field and talk about something else, just just talk about something else, and that's what they talk about the next day. This is show prep, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Fact, well, I think I, what's different I, too with I, our group is that we extrapolate out where things are going, you know, kind of like, you know, Roy mentioned a, a potential attack on Taiwan before the election. We've been saying there's credible people are saying there might not be an election. Well, if there is a war in Taiwan and if there's economic collapse, reserve currency issues by the way we don't own any munitions because we sent them all to ukraine understand that's what happened we sent them our bullets and we're ordering more bullets we don't have them right now mm -hmm. so if the war kicks up and our credit card gets cut up how are we going to pay for the bullets and you know these are the kind of things that you know the dots we connect where it's like you know there's there's troubling times ahead folks Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still looking at 
some some um, so, some headlines here. Jason Jason said it earlier. It's like something's getting ready to happen, y'all. Oh Somebody, yeah. Some something's getting ready to happen. We don't know what it is, but so, and actually, I said that to you at, uh, a few months ago. I said if we knew what was coming, I damn sure tell you. I just I just don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on. But G is sick. Biden is sick. McConnell's uh, sick. Putin is sick. McConnell is sick. Feinstein is sick. The old guard is going out. And now you've got Republicans. you got MTG saying that uh, McConnell's unfit for office and, and his family ought to be ashamed. And I agree with that. I think yeah, that's the biggest failure of all these things is where are these people's families? Yep. Yeah, how have we disintegrated to this point? Get them off the stage. And going back to that that Mitch McConnell thing, I understand how many people feel. I do. I feel the same way. But what is happening? I mean, I have a I have a ninety seven year old mom that is almost in the same predicament. She used to freeze a while ago. She used to freeze the um, those many strokes. You freeze. The reason why I think that he has a little bit more of a dementia type of thing is because the woman asked him a question and he answered her. He didn't just freeze, freeze and not talk. He answered her. It's like, did you want to say something? Um, he said, yes. And then that was it. I was like, oh my God. And then I don't know if it, I don't know if y'all say anything about it. But she should have moved him off. She should have moved him. She said, okay, um, he's taking more questions. What? What do you mean he's taking more questions? Get him he off the stage. He didn't take the first question. Yeah, I mean, get him off the stage. You can see he's not good. I bet you, man. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Whatever. Okay. All right. Bet. Y'all ain't going to stop until he just falls out. Is that it? Y'all want him to fall out on stage. Okay, bet. I mean, hey, okay. I can deal with it. I can roll hey, with the rest it. Of, the rest of the world's watching this too, man. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. there's no decisiveness in Congress. Yeah. There's no decisions being made, man. It's everything's behind the door. And they're back in the office on Tuesday. And, you know, after, and they got a lot of work to do in Congress between the budget. I mean, that starts on the House side. And, you know, there's inquiries they're talking about doing on the <laughs> Senate side. Uh-oh. Pro Ron DeSantis Super PAC ends door knocking in Nevada and Super Tuesday states. <laughs> He's going back to being governor. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we need to put a bet on the show. Who drops uh, out first, Ron DeSantis or Joe Biden? DeSantis. You think so? I don't know the the Biden thing. Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. But, I, I think what we're going to have one of the things we're going to have this year is a conversation about Obama's queerness. Oh yeah, Tucker. Because I think Big Mike's going to come out, and then then we got to talk about it. Right. But either way, either way, uh, if you take away Biden's security and just let him. You know that old game where you turn around in a circle and you put your head down on the um, yeah and spin bat. and try, then try spin, to run. Yeah. yeah, that's remove the bat and remove <laughs> Biden security and just watch him walk and he's just going to go wherever. Okay, it's like that's why I said I don't know if it would be DeSantis first because Biden doesn't even look like he can control himself without. Somebody I think it. Biden will declare in around September to November is kind of the 60 day, 90 day window that he's not going to run for re-election. That's my prediction. By December, po politicians have to be registered as primary voters, yeah, primary yeah. contestants in, in states. Yeah. I don't know which right. state, if they're all at the same day or what. I think they all have different dates, but I heard, I think California's is in December. Yeah, that's where I think for them to follow through on their their procedures for nominating a candidate, he, mm. he's got a hard deadline of this fall and it's different by different states and registration and all that. So 
Otherwise, I'll, if he end up declaring and nobody else declares, they're going to have chaos on the Democrat side. And don't, don't worry. Don't worry about the rules. The rules don't matter. They're going to do what the right. hell they want to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess that is a true statement. And actually, other people have declared. They just don't want them. Right. Uh, you know, they, I mean, it's a it's strange how Kennedy is not even um, on Fox News anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> they they thought they were gonna man they just use people they just use people it's uh you know i i go back and say that we that we are the ones that created uh aoc or when we didn't create her we just increased her folklore uh well we didn't do it fox news did it okay we gotta go um we want everybody to have a beautiful and um safe holiday weekend make sure that you if you do barbecue send us some pictures uh if you get put in jail or whatnot don't con don't call us <laughs> yeah we yeah we ain't got no bail money we don't yeah um last night i was watching this cop chase and um i have never in my life seen anything like this cop chase ever in my entire life i've been on this earth 50, 50 some years. I have never seen anything that lasts 20, 25, 26 miles. This dude, it, it, not only not only did he hit another level of speed and left the cops in the dust, he went on the other side of the highway. And if you want to put that into perspective, you're going 65. And then you see somebody shroom, right by you on your side of the house. <laughs> Giddy up. That I mean, that's 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 remarkable. That that that's remarkable. And then he only got a thirty thousand dollar bond. I'll send you that. I'll send you that video after the show. Jason, give me some last thoughts. Uh well, hey, winners and losers on Friday, right? I'm gonna say my winner of the week. President Donald John Trump, A, he got to start his week on the Wayne Dupree show. And B, right. he sold a shitload of merchandise with his mugshot on that's going to fund his campaign. Uh, my loser of the week is the Constitution. The left is just wiping their butt. The judicial branch, what they're doing with criminalization of the DOJ, they're wiping their butt with the Constitution. Folks, that should make every American citizen mad, right, left, or center. Thanks for tuning in this week, folks. Have a good weekend. Hutch, over to you. While the DNC abandons the state of New Hampshire, Biden is nowhere to be found. RFK has surged to 31% of likely wow. primary voters in See? New Hampshire. That's a big deal, folks. It is that a big is. deal. That have a great big. weekend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't forget to check out redvoicemedia.com. Check out their Rumble channel, Red Voice Media. Uh, you can also check out our media. Uh, well, you can check out our website at WayneDupree.com. Also, um, uh, Hutch Bailey Jr. has a radio show, uh, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hutch? 8 p.m. Go to ColdWarRadio.net. Cold War Radio, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Thank you. Jason has a website. Uh, the Amer uh, I don't know why I keep wanting to say the Amer American Mirror, but it's not the American Mirror. It's, what is, what is there, it? There's two. There's theamericantribune.com, which is more of our politically acceptable stuff. And then American theamericantribune.news, which is our sub stack, uh, where uh, this week we're talking about how Obama got involved in white supremacy in South Africa that's resulting in a bunch of people being killed. White supremacy in South Africa. That's always been there, but that's not a story, though. <laughs> yeah, right? Just that, that, that's, that's not a story. Y'all have a beautiful weekend. Again, safe. We love you. Big people coming up next week. We love you, Rare Voice Media, for giving us these extra four minutes. We really do.